So I started um, investigating Jeep Consortia. We looked at the NHS reform document and found that one of the massive parts of the shake-up was that instead of PCPs handling um, all of the referrals, it was instead going to be groups of GPs who were either already existing or they were going to be set up and, and there were going to be elections for the GPs. And they were going to be handling all the decisions on referrals, they were going to be handi handling decisions on, um, on prescriptions, on what drugs they would buy in, what services they would commission. So for example, what dermatology service would they commission or um, other sort of um, ENT services, that sort of thing. Um, then we looked at how the boards would be set up and we found that the issue was that there was a potential for conflict of interest because the doctors who were sitting on the board may have links to, for example, a dermatology clinic. So what was going to stop them from um, potentially bringing up their own clinic as, as somewhere they could look to, to commission, um, rather than looking at other services in the area? So uh, that's what we started looking at, and we collated information from all um, the PCTs in the country. We went to all PCTs. We said, we asked them whether they had um, lists of board members. Um, we only looked at the first, I think it was 52 Pathfinder Consortia, so 52, board, 52 boards. Some of them hadn't been set up yet. Some of them were changing. Some of them were um, holding elections. So we had to keep updating and updating, which involved lots of ringing of uh, press officers. Uh, we didn't have to do any FOIs, which was good because it's all in the public interest. Um, but it involved repeated calls, it involved lots of web searching. Sometimes um, commissioners would put on their websites, um, if there was a GP consortium already set up for a couple of years, then they might put on their website if they had any links to um, private interests, private clinics, that sort of thing. Um, but often we'd have to find out um, from the PCPs themselves. Um, so it was quite a long exercise um, and, an, and ongoing because obviously we had to keep checking. Um, and once we had a list of all board members, we then looked on Companies Health um, because if their interests weren't declared, we could find them on there. And we would find whether they were directors of any um, medical companies. Um, and then make a big database and we made with that uh, a map of all 52 Pathfinder Consortia, um, a sort of graphic on the internet where if you hovered your mouse over one of the consortia it would show you the board members and any which had potential conflicts of interest and then you could click on them and go and see which ones had conflicts of interest, which um, clinics for example they um, were running or they were working at. So it was quite um, an interesting exercise for finding out actually who is going to be commissioning the NHS services and what interest do they have because it's not transparent at the moment. The information about the NHS reforms was all on Hansard and it was on um, the Department of Health website. Um, some of it if we clarified with the press office. So we were gathering, well initially we gathered information just about the NHS reforms and there's a big document online and, and you know you just print it off and put it in a file. Um, but then all the information that about the particular consortia we put in a big database, um, which we could there were about a team of about four or five of us who could enter data and, and change it all at the same time. Um, I mean we kept copies so that you know if anything went wrong we'd still have copies of it. Um, and we kept all phone numbers, email addresses of all the contacts we made so we could go back, check figures. So it sped up the research process. Um, any comments that had been made to us we'd put on the side, kept all emails, kept all correspondence, um, just in case we needed any evidence to back anything up. When we started, we would we didn't know how many consortia there were going to be. So we didn't necessarily write down all the information about each PCT or each um, press office that we were approaching. 
which made it quite difficult to then go back when we realised that the information was changing all the time. So, I mean, writing down everything, keeping a note of everything, every conversation, even though it's laborious, it's actually so useful when you go back and look at everything that you've got. And if it's all in a database, it's there, it's ready, and you can check everything. Because obviously, when it's changing all the time, you need to constantly fact check. Um, so I think we would have done that from the beginning. I mean, we didn't know how big it was going to be when we started. And later on, there were actually more, uh, two more waves of GB consortia that were added. So we looked at those as well, um, which added a complication so it became bigger. But yeah, keep notes all the time. 